Fox News voter analysis shows Biden winning crucial battles in the suburb with uh, suburbs with the race to 270 now hinging on just a few key states. Suburban women are playing a huge role in this election so far, as we predicted, of course, helping give the former vice president a big lead nationally over President Trump among women. Let's bring in Brad Blakeman, former deputy assistant to President George W. Bush and Leslie Marshall, progressive radio talk show host and Fox News contributor. Good morning to you. And Leslie, I, I say as, as predicted because, you know, just about every prediction heading into this, we knew that women were, the female vote was going to be crucial to the outcome of this election. So what are we seeing on that front so far when it comes to both candidates? Well, <clears throat> well, look, Donald Trump certainly has lost women since 2016, but honestly, I can't put it all on the president. Since 1980, Sandra, women have just been election cycle after election cycle moving over to the Democratic Party. And what I think happened this time in 2020 is it really came down to issues like COVID and health care. Women are, are typically uh, caretakers. And then you have to look at just the number of women that are voting uh, compared to men. And then you just have to look at that percentage, 90 one to 92 percent of African-American women or women of color uh, that voted for uh, Biden. I think one of the things the president did that was very wrong is he had some antiquated remarks like getting their husbands back to work, attacking female moderators or very well respected female journalists like Leslie Stahl. Brad, we know that, that President Trump went out there and he campaigned hard and he campaigned hard for the vote of suburban women at one point saying, please like me, you'll remember. He said, suburban <laughs> women, will you please like me? Here's the Fox News voter analysis on the national suburban women vote. Biden 59 percent to Donald Trump earning 40 percent uh, uh, as far as that shows. What did you think of the ultimate turnout based on how hard he campaigned? Well, look, with, with Donald Trump, it's always a battle between rhetoric and results. You might not like what he says, but you should very much like, if you're a woman, what he's done, his record, who he surrounds himself with, who he gives positions to, whether it's an expansion of child care, whether it's family leave 12 weeks, whether it's historic 75-year unemployment rates for women, uh, whether it's law and order, whether it's keeping the peace and withdrawing our troops. Uh, if you look at his record, and, and uh, especially with regard to women issues and, and that are concerning them, then he should be running away with it because the alternative for women uh, should be unthinkable. Um, you know, Obamacare is is destined for failure, and the one one size fits all of a universal uh, health care system is not going to be any better for women than it will be for anybody else. Uh, when government controls things. They tend not to do it well. And uh, so I think that, again, if you look at the president's record on, on women's issues and other things, suburban women, I don't care where you are, city, suburban, rural, uh, you should be satisfied with what Donald Trump has delivered because promises made were promises kept, especially for women. Leslie, uh, uh, Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, she made it very clear that she believes that female turnout is what put Biden over the top in her state. Listen. I have been out there, I've been talking to people, I've been looking at the numbers. Women came out and made a difference, voted in far larger numbers than they did four years ago. When all the votes are counted and we owe that to every single person across the country, we count them in a methodical, calm, secure way, Joe Biden is going to win this year. So eventually both campaigns will look back and, and, and really dig into the details and see what, you know, what, if anything, they should have done differently. But is this what led to victory for Joe Biden in that state? Oh, I, I think very possibly. Look, you have to remember, um, you know, over 50 percent of uh, Michiganders love their governor. And uh, President Trump had made a lot of attacks on their governor, who also happens to be a woman. Um, I, women don't like that. 
I, I, as a woman, don't like, you know, the attacks on women. Something else that came up is another uh, very conservative judge seated on the bench when a majority of women, even if they're pro-life, they want Roe v. Wade to stay put uh, as the ruling uh, came down in 1973. I do think that brought out some women. You know, we saw a lot of first-time voters, not just in Michigan, mm -hmm. but in other states, Sandra, and a lot of women, uh, younger women especially, uh, registered to vote for the first time. So women well, Lastly, are what I don't hear you mentioning is the economy. We know pocketbook issues are essential to the female vote, and Trump really went after that. Final thoughts, Brad. Well, I think in, in any election, channel. if there are not lessons learned, took me off uh, look, we made in historic inroads in Hispanic and in, uh, in African-American uh, voting. Uh, we need to expand that. And we have to have lessons learned. And if you don't learn a lesson, well, then shame on you. We need to understand where our deficits are and work on it. All right, Brad and Leslie, we'll leave it there. Thanks to both of you. Appreciate your time this morning.